Good evening, everybody. Uh, yesterday, we had built our um, Street Fighter 2 AI plan bot in Pi Game so that we were able to watch a random set of actions fight on the screen. Uh, not Nothing fancy, but a good intro to Pi Game. So, yeah. Now, today, we're going to, uh, instead of using this action random space here, this action space sample, which just randomly selects from the keyboard, we're going to build our own interface to control uh, Ryu manually, okay? Because that's the first step into fighting our character. Uh, okay, let's clear this up. So, fantastically, again, one of the reasons I picked Pi Game, it has a whole set of stuff for uh, working with joysticks. And it's incredibly easy to use. Like, it could not be easy. We're going to say joystick is for, J is for joystick. Polygame.joystick.joystick0. So this is the zero joystick, the first joystick. If you have two joysticks, uh, I've actually not ever played with two joysticks, but I assume the second joystick is one. Okay, give it a different variable name, J2, and you're good to go. So now we've initialized the joystick. Uh, I'm using a, uh, I have this 8-bit-do uh, SNES-style, NES-style controller that I'm going to use. Uh, you can use whatever you got. You can use Xbox controllers. I think all of them are supported as long as they fit into your, uh, here. As, lo as long as you can see them in here, see, you you can use them in uh, Pi Game. Okay, so... Let's see where we are. Okay, one of the important things to do in um, in uh, OpenAI Retro is to grab the buttons that are available in the retro.make, right? So we've we've imported this game, and it happens to be a Genesis game. So we want the Genesis mapping of the buttons, because each if it's an NES game, it obviously have fewer buttons, and yeah. So the easiest way to do that is to run the there they are right there. So see this little set right here? This, these are the buttons that the uh, environment can understand. We're going to map them to keyboard presses and to joystick inputs, OK? So I tend to like to call it butts. So that's our butts variable. We can refer to that uh, anytime now and grab positions or names. Um, you know, an another important thing to check actually is the, uh, the Pi game comes with a clock cycle uh, and to be to speed the game to play the game at a like normal speed at like a regular speed instead of super fast you can set a uh, clock tick of whatever you want I find 60 works pretty good so this will look slow now but normal right that's the normal Street Fighter speed maybe a little bit fast uh, but basically it's how many milliseconds per frame. So I have it set at 60 now, which, you know, one second per frame. It's a little slow, actually. <laughs> Maybe it's something else, but that's that's how you do it, okay? That's an important thing. Otherwise, the game plays really, really fast. Uh, all right. So uh, we're going to do our controller stuff in here now. Controller events. Okay. So this is the image screen screen image display what do you want to call it yeah we'll call this display okay so control events and this is the uh, actions the what's it called well it's the environment progress environment forward cool okay you're not supposed I think you're supposed to do it like this Ooh. for the state I'd like to do it like this I prefer it so pygame.event.pump is apparently necessary, not 100% convinced it is, but what it's supposed to do is cycle pygame's internal input something or other. Um, so I'm just going to use it because I was told somewhere online to use it, and uh, it works. So that's why we're going to use it. Next, we're going to track uh, all of the, the keys that get pressed. So pygame comes, with, again, with all this fancy stuff, and one of the things they have is keys.press. So let's print keys, okay? This is going to give us the whole keyboard's worth of push buttons to push, but uh, yeah. So you just see this huge array of inputs, right? And I can change them. 
If I push in buttons, you see that? That's the keyboard. Uh, we're gonna now trim that down quite significantly. Um, so, basically you can go, oops, what's going on? Basically you can for loop through the events. Okay, so the way it works is if you hit a keyboard, that's an event. So event in pygame.event.get, which grabs all the events. This is so for each event in the pygame event.get. Um, now we're going to check if that key corresponds with a key we have set. So for example, if keys, which we earlier got, pygame.get keys, whatever. <laughs> Uh, we're going to go pygame.key underscore write, okay? So built into pygame is a recognition of the cursor key write. So that's what k.write is, okay? Um, oh, we need a variable, actually. We're going to track, we're going to track our actions that we've input in a, um, a set, okay? The reason we're going to do this is because we can loop through it later and compare it kind of quickly. It's really kind of nice, actually. We need uh, two things. We're going to make an action uh, actions set, and then here, this is actually for um, for uh, Genesis. There are twelve inputs. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we're going to make a blank array called action array. This is what we're eventually going to feed into our um, it emulator. Okay, so actions equals set. So every time this loops, set gets set to nothing, I think. Yes. <laughs> and right now, if you push right, we're going to go actions dot add. So we're adding it to the set right. Uh, the reason we picked the word right like that is because right is one of the words in our buts array, which we got from ends.button. The reason we're not just referring specifically to env.buttons is because it doesn't play nice with some of the extensions built on top of um, OpenAI Retro. I'll show you that later. Uh, okay. So here, for event in pygame event.get, if keys. Uh, if keys, and keys here is the pressed buttons, if one of the buttons is uh, cursor right, to actions add right. Okay, so now we're going to print actions. So nothing, 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 right, 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 right. See that? It's confusing, but there you go. Um, so we're going to build a set of inputs and then feed those inputs into the emulator through the env.set. Set. Um, so for now, uh, we're going to do the rest of the buttons first, but like, let me just show you what, what my move here is. I got some moves and this is it. So for uh, I, for A in butts, and we're enumerating it, so I is the length of butts. Um, buts are these. So this is for all of the words in here. We are going to loop through actions and check if A is in actions. Okay, so A actions is the set that we're building and we're going to check if any of the buttons are in actions. And if they are, we're going to say action at the position that we currently are in the loop is equal to 1. Else action Oops, actions array, excuse me. Ah. How do you program, guys? Okay, so what we've done here is action array, if you recall, we've specified it starts out zero. So if any of these are one, that acts as an input for the corresponding key. For example, B is this one, A is this one. Uh, on the emulator. So if you set it to one and pass it to the emulator, it'll hit B in the game. Okay. So what we've done here is we've looped through this array. And if any of the buttons matches what we've put in actions, right? So for example, if we hit key right in this loop, it'll add right to the action. So if right here matches right here, it'll set the number in the for loop that we're at equal to one. Okay. And, uh, well, you'll see what that does here. Oh, I'm printing the wrong thing. Excuse me. We need to print action array. So this would be all 12 things. And, oh, and you can kind of see 
there a little bit see it moving maybe not it's turning off immediately so it's it's uh yeah that's hitting one for us i guess we could do this if action array print this yeah that's not gonna work because it's always one um here what about that yeah do you see so we've turned on one there uh right still jumping around like a nut because we still have action space set here but we can actually go ahead and replace this part with action array so now ryu will just do what we tell him to see him <laughs> wiggling forward there pretty cool right okay <laughs> It's not, not perfect yet, but that's you can see that we can now input into the game by hitting the uh, keyboard. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? That's that. We don't need this. Um, clock tick is 60. We have action array built into that. Okay, so I'm instead of typing out every individual little thing, I'm just going to copy paste uh, the rest of these. Okay, and you may notice some additional stuff to it too. So this is the same thing just over and over again. It's just for the other buttons. I picked Z X C A. -C Oops. Oh, oh crud. So let's replace this. Command formatting. What gives? So I've replaced, uh, so now my array has all of these buttons in it. And I've added some extra stuff. You may see these j.get hats. So the um, input, remember we called the joystick j? The get hat is the left and right and up and down of the digital pad. So the D-pad on a controller, in, in my particular case, is get hat. These here refer to, so this one's right, so if that's a one, if that's a positive one, that, you know, that's pushed to the D-pad to the right, this is pushed D-pad to the left, this is down, and this is up, okay? And then additionally, um, I had to put in um, upright, so I can jump to the, like, corner, so that's one one, uh, up left is negative one one, right down is one negative one, left down is uh, both of them negative. If this is super confusing to you because I just copy pasted this in, um, all it is is J is the name of the joystick, get hat is the direction on the D-pad, zero is because I only have one controller connected, if you have two I think the other one's one, and this uh, these two directions just specify up, down, left, right, that's it, okay? So I've appended that to my K right, K left, so that's left on the cursor, down, K up, right? So now my functions are if you push right on the cursor or right on the D-pad on the controller, add right to the thing, okay? Straightforward, nothing to her. Uh, and down here, I've added, uh, I've used ZXCASD. So on your keyboard, uh, ZXCASD, those refer to A, B, C, X, Y, Z. So on the Genesis controller, there's the uh, A, B, C, X, Y, Z control uh, the buttons, or X, X, Y, yeah, X, Y, Z, I think, right? Is that right? Yep, X, Y, Z. Um, and then the J.get button, 0, 1, 8, 4, 3, 9. Those refer to the B, A, X, Y, L, R buttons on my controller, okay? Uh, you'll probably have to test test it out on your controller to make sure you got them all the same, but uh, I'll upload this code to the internet and you can mess with it, do whatever you want. Um, and then this for loop, as before, goes through the butts function and sets one if uh, that button has been, if that butt has button has been added to our action set and zero if it hasn't. So for as long as you hold the button, it'll be pressed and not, okay? Uh, and then action array is fed into our environment and uh, we should now be able to control Ryu. I really hope this works. <laughs> if it doesn't, yeah. what? Oh no, Ryu, what's wrong? Okay, well he'll jump and stuff, punch, kick. 
Okay, well, something I've changed has made it so it turns off the thing. Yeah, see, there's the jump. I want a more fluid control, so let's see what's going on. Okay, uh, I figured out what the error is. The mistake, hilariously, is an indentation problem, which is probably an unfortunate reality of programming in Python. Everything else is so great, but indenting is a mistake. So uh, we had written the for loop outside of the events loop, and we definitely need to check each item in the event, uh, right? Otherwise, it's only going to do one at a time. So if you just tab, tab her in there, highlight them all, and move them up one, everything works just great. There you go. That's right, you jumping around. So I'm using the keyboard right now. These are all the buttons that we mapped. Uh, you can jump left and right, up and down, duck. Uh, Guile is on two-player at the moment, so he's not doing anything. And uh, we can actually even use my controller. So now I'm using the controller. Right? So it's like a Super Nintendo controller. <laughs> can I do a fireball? Fireball! Right? So there you go, guys. That's how you uh, set up a uh, Pi game environment to play an emulator in OpenAI. We built an emulator out of OpenAI and Pi game. Okay, guys? We're awesome. See ya. In the next episode, we'll we'll uh, we'll we'll turn on the AIs. <laughs>